Hello, everyone. I'm Tom Connolly, President and Chief Investment Officer at Versa Capital Management in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, thank you all for spending some time with me here this morning on uh, November 4th. Uh, today, I'd like to say a few words uh, about the upcoming midterm election. And um, I am going to not talk too much about politics. I am going to talk a little bit about how markets have behaved around midterm elections and give you a little bit of perspective on that. So uh, first of all, um, I'd like to talk about what's at stake, uh, what's up for grabs. All 435 House of Representative seats are available. 35 out of the 100 Senate seats are contested. And of the 50 state governorships, 36 are up for election. And a few states are voting on some consequential propositions. There are some in my home state of Arizona and certainly and some in California and more, uh, others out, out east. So it's certainly uh, a big election with a lot of consequences uh, possible. Um, so people uh, ask you know, whether or not we should change their investments uh, considering what's going on in the election. And as you as you might guess, uh, answers can vary widely depending on what end of the political spectrum you're on. Uh, we have uh, clients and associates on both sides of the political spectrum um, and on some other dimensions than just left and right as well. Um, however, uh, I'm not going to talk about who's ahead where or uh, what the uh, ideological uh, drivers are behind the election. I want to just kind of look at what happens uh, during midterm elections and how investors should think about it. How should people uh, think around the possibility of changing investments based upon what party ends up uh, in control? Um, so I think uh, I'll start with um, uh, looking at more fine and granular data. Uh, so I have here a histogram that shows the month, all the monthly returns uh, from 1926 through the end of uh, 1921. And the monthly returns during historical midterm elections are shown. The red is Republican, blue is Democrat, uh, purple is mixed. The one party holds the House or Senate and the other party holds the other chamber. <clears throat> and the gray are simply uh, months in which there were no elections. And I, you can see that there are, um, the distribution is kind of random. Uh, it's very hard to discern a pattern in the uh, return for during the month of an election. However, the returns are skewed to the right, which means uh, most of the election months are positive uh, uh, historically, although there are some negative ones. So um, during election years, uh, such as they are, if the uh, return for the year is positive, generally the returns are concentrated in the fourth quarter of the years in which a midterm election is held. Um, a, a really uh, interesting uh, number that came out of some State Street research was that during the year in a midterm election, at some point during the year, uh, there's a a string of uh, days where uh, there's a, a drawdown that averages 19%. So this year we've hit you know, 24, 25% on the downturn from uh, the S&P 500. It's come back a little bit lately. Um, so certainly our experience is a little worse than the average, but it's not unusual at some point during the year uh, to have a, a, a rather large market drawdown. So let's move from uh, the monthly um, to what has ha what happens uh, following an election. Um, typically, uh, after a midterm election, uh, markets are positive. In fact, uh, there's never they've always been positive in the year following a midterm election. And the uh, bulk of it happens in the six months following the election, where the average uh, market return post midterm election is thirteen percent. And there's never been a recession in the year following a midterm election. I'm not so sure we're going to see that in 2023. Uh, there very well might be a recession. The markets are certainly 
have priced in um, some distress, whether it's from uh, interest rates rising or liquidity being pulled back or um, anticipated changes in fiscal policy. We don't, we're, we're not sure how that sorts out, but uh, in any case, uh, it's post in the post-war period, markets um, have always been positive, uh, regardless of who wins, what house or what governorship. Um, so I'd like to, uh, at this point, stop and say, make a comment on my presentation. And at the root, it's, it's really kind of silly uh, what I'm talking about here, because we are taking an event, an election in the midterm, uh, a midterm election. And then we are looking at history. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about going forward, but we're talking about it just in the context of an election, just one consideration. Um, where there are many other things going on right now. We have a war going on in the Ukraine. We have, we're in one of the most, if not the most restrictive uh, periods in monetary policy uh, in, in history. Um, we have, uh, we still have a, a tremendous amount of fiscal stimulus coming out of Washington in terms of a large budget deficit. I, mean, I can go on and on and on and on. There are lots of other things going on in the markets right now in this year um, that are probably more impactful and important than what uh, than this election. Now, uh, depending where you sit on the political spectrum and your perspectives, you might feel differently. Um, uh, certainly during this election, more than any time in my life, except maybe the uh, late 60s, early 70s, the passions are running very high and, uh, and people have, um, are invested emotionally as well intelli as intellectually in this election. But um, Congress is just, the Congress and the, and the governorships and the Senate are just one of many, many factors that figure into how markets are going to behave in the short run following uh, an election and in the long run. So let's take a look a little bit at what has happened uh, historically. Well, surprisingly, you look at a century of returns in elections that after the midterm elections, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's really not a discernible pattern. Markets have tended to go up. There are some ups and downs. This is a data series that shows if you invested $1 on January 1st of 1926, it, it grew to ten thousand um, dollars uh, right before covid um, uh, so uh, i'm sorry right after uh, in 2021 and so uh the result here is pretty much an upward trend that does have some interruptions uh you can the, historically you can see the depression early on um, you can see the period of uh inflation and uh in the Late, from the late 60s through 1980 that really had a, was a stagnant period for markets. And then you can see 2008, um, you can see uh, COVID, you can see the tech bubble, but the trend has been relentlessly upward for the an investment in the stock market. And if you look at the colors, blue for uh, Democrats, red for Republicans, it's really difficult to pull out a pattern of what you know when both houses were in power when one was in power um you know they say uh, a divided uh, congress is good for markets but you can see right after uh, 2000 there that wasn't the case um so there are exceptions to kind of every kind of uh, conventional wisdom out there um so but it's really difficult to see a pattern depending on who's who's been in charge so it's not to say that that this information isn't important or might not impact markets um, uh, because policy changes come out of Washington uh, that can affect markets in the long run, but we, it's really hard to pick out the good guys and the bad guys in these elections. So, you know, investors, they in, in the stock market, investors invest in businesses, companies that generate cash flows in the future. Um, you know, they don't invest in political parties or governors or even presidents. So keeping our eyes on uh, fundamentals, um, 
do we, uh, you know, markets provide us with earnings growth, dividends, real estate pays rents, bonds pay interest uh, over the long run. We pay attention to what that looks like, what inflation might be, and how much are we paying uh, for those uh, investments are really the important uh, considerations going forward. Um, so, you know, if we have a plan that we have in place for investing and meeting goals, uh, it's important to stick to that because um, uh, derailing it on short term cons politi uh, political concerns, uh, if we're acting on information that in the past has shown rather random results, is probably a, a mistake. Um, so. Uh, thank you for your time today. It was uh, enjoyable for me to have the session with you here, and I look forward to seeing you next time.